for us to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of the trials, all of the difficulties, all of the calamities we face every day, all of the hardships the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is facing, we have to ask ourselves sincerely, are we connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is our relationship with Allah? A few months ago, we were in the month of Ramadan. Walhamdulillah, it was a month of ibadah. It was a month of siyan. It was a month of standing and a month of reading the Quran. And for some of us, unfortunately, that has stopped outside of the month of Ramadan. But it's time to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through many ways. Among them is reading the Quran. Among the ways to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering a nawafil, involuntary prayers, wa sunan rawatir. Among the ways to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through tawbah, repenting, repenting to Allah. Among the ways to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dhikr. In the morning, after Fajr, and after Asr. Among the ways to connect to Allah, reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by making an istighfar. An istighfar. Among the ways to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dua. And that is our subject today. وَقَالَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَالِ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عَنِّي وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قُرِيمِ And when my slaves ask you about me, then tell them I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ And I answer, I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls on me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قُرِيمِ that when my slaves ask you about me, Muhammad, then inform them that I am close. And this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to his servant through his knowledge. Laysa ma'iya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, but he is with us through his knowledge. When we call on him, he hears our dua. Regardless of which language a person supplicates, whether it's in China, in Tamil, in Arabic, in English, Spanish, regardless, when a person supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is able to understand that and comprehend that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse, He said, fadli. Ask Allah for His bounty. His bounty. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to who? Allah. So this ayah, Allah is directing us to ask Him for His bounty because He is the one who can give it to us with ease. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي يَسْتَجِيبَ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُنَّ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, and your Lord said, invoke me, meaning believe in me one alone without any partners, and ask me for anything, and I will respond to your supplication. Verily those who scorn worship, meaning they don't invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they call on Allah, and along with that, they call on someone else. This is a negation of the Islamic monotheism. And Allah, He said that they would enter into hell, into humiliation. My brothers and sisters, these three ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He is ordering us to make dua to Him. When we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this strengthens our relationship, this strengthens our bond. And it also raises us in honor. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَقْرَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنَ الدُّعَانِ Abu Huraira radi Allahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is nothing more honorable with Allah than supplication. You want to attain honor, 
The best way to obtain honor and isra and status and rank is by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your needs, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove your hardships, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you. This hadith is mentioned in Imam Tirmidhi's book under the chapter what has been reported about the virtue of supplication. It shows that a person gains honor. The meaning for this hadith is supplication is the most honorable with the law compared to other acts of worship on the tongue. And when he said there is nothing, this refers to all of the kinds of remembrances and acts of worship. All of the kinds of remembrances. When he said most honorable, then this refers to my brothers and sisters of the most excellent act of worship. And supplication, when we make supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we make dua, we acknowledge Allah's strength. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. When we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows our tawheed that we need Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything, my brothers and sisters. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasizing the importance of dua on a hadith of Nu'man ibn al Bashir and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala ad du'a'u the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that dua is ibadah, is worship. To show the importance, to show its significance. That dua is worship. Dua is powerful. It connects us to Allah. And many of us are disconnected. Dua has the ability to repel all evils. Dua has the ability to repel all evils and harms that are heading our way through the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call out Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yuhuddu al-qada'a illa dua'u, wa la yazidu fi al-umri illa birr. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, nothing repels the qadr like dua, and nothing increases a righteous lifespan, except through piety, except through piety. We need to reconnect, my brothers and sisters, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to begin by raising our hands and asking Him for His mercy, asking Him for His help, asking Him to unite the Muslim leaders, asking Him for all of our needs, because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has the ability over all things. When is the last time we sat and faced the Qibla? and raised our hands, making dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we go this way and we go that way. We look for wasta. We want to go to this person for help, knock on this door, knock on this door, instead of knocking on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the benefit of dua? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us this is a bushra, this is a glad tidings for you and me as Muslims. The Muslim's dua is always answered. It's always answered. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ma'ala ardi muslimun. Yad'u allaha. Bi'a'watan illa ata'allahu iya'u. Al sarafan min suri mithlaha. Ma'lam yad'u bi madha'an, bi ma'adhan, o qadiyatin rahim. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, There is none who utters the supplication except that Allah gives him what he asks, or prevents evil from him that is equal to it, as long as he does not supplicate for something evil or cut him off the ties of the womb. Look at that, my brothers and sisters. Look at that. Sometimes we ask for land. Sometimes we ask this one. Sometimes we ask that one. And we wait six months where that person, he says, inshallah, inshallah. But are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove our hardships? Are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah? Are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for righteous offsprings? Are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in risk? Are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the hellfire? What are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first dua in the Quran is we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Guide us to straight path. 
Guidance is in the hands of Allah. You were brought here today to Juma by the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By no other means. Where are we with dua? It's time for us to reconnect.